Blackmagic Design today introduced a new version, new beta version of Resolve called Resolve 17. Uh, it has quite a few improvements and changes from Resolve 16. So in this video I'll be going over many of the changes. I won't be an exhaustive list and I'll only be showing and previewing the different features. I won't be going in depth in how to use them. I'll be doing that in some subsequent videos. And I'll probably also go over some of the other features quickly in a, in a follow-up video to this one because it's already uh, going to be quite long. So I'll try to split this up into multiple videos. In this video I'll show you many of the changes they made in the newest version of Resolve, Resolve 17. First change they made to the new version of Resolve, Resolve 17, is building in both the cut page and edit page to see a preview of any effects that you might be wanting to try out that are in the uh, effects panel over here. So you see that's a Gaussian blur, see a mosaic blur here. You could also do it with the titles. You can kind of preview the titles and see what they're going to look like in lower thirds. And that's both on the edit page and on the cut page. Come over here and do the same thing. Scroll through and see what the effect will look like. And same thing if you go over to titles. You can see what the different titles will be. So that's a nice addition. A lot of people have been asking for that to see previews of these different effects and sample text that they provide for their templates. So that's one of the changes in both the Edit tab and the Cut tab in the new Resolve 17. This next feature that they added basically pertains to anything with a text box. So you hear I'm on the Edit tab. I'm going to drag over a text title. So I can click on that and you can see it over here in the Inspector. And this is a feature that's been uh, requested for quite a long time, I think since before Resolve 15, but if you change your font and if you scroll through, you'll see you'll actually get a preview of the font before you add it, before you change it, so you get an idea of what it's going to look like. And then once you choose it, then it's selected there. That gives you a nice feature to be able to scroll through all your different titles and get a look at what's going to be before you decide to add it. And that'll be available from anything with text box. So here I'm going to do a fusion title and do the same thing. I'll go to the font and I'll scroll through different fonts. And as long as you have it installed and it's possible to display it, you'll see your different fonts available here. So it's definitely a nice addition that they added. And that's another new feature they added to Resolve 17. Another change they made, which is available from both the edit, cut, and color pages, are new Resolve effects, which will be found under under the toolbox under the open effects. Then you could kind of go through here and look. Some of them are available on the free version, and others, if you see this DaVinci Resolve Studio text there, I mean it's only available if you purchase the studio version, which is probably a good idea because it is give you uh, does give you a lot of extra features. But at least one. Uh, new Resolve FX Transform they've added is actually Transform. So if you drag that over, put that onto your clip, and come over to the Effects tab of your inspector, which you can see they've changed. But you have some of the same options that you have under just a normal transformer on a video. You could zoom, change the position, rotate the angle, pitch on, flip it. So that's all available here. But you also have under control mode, instead of just using the sliders, you can change that to interactive canvas. And this way you could click on the canvas itself and make sure that you have the open FX overlay enabled here on the left bottom side here. And here you click and drag and warp and transform your image and get it the way you want it to look and kind of play around with it here. And if you want to undo it, you can just click on Reset Canvas under the Inspector. And then another control mode is Pins. So here you just basically click on one of the edges and it'll add a pin, and you click in another spot and add another pin. And then when you move it, it'll basically rotate and move around based on those points you've added. And you can add another one. And again, it'll anchor it at certain points and allow you to skew it and move it around and kind of line it up to the way you want it. And again, if you don't want, don't like what you've done, click Reset Canvas. 
And you can also keyframe, it's keyframeable, as most of the options are. So again, they've added quite a few new open effects. You can have the video collage where you can quickly create like zoom collages and video collages of multiple videos. But I'll leave that to another video. But that was a, another new change that they made in uh, the newest version of Resolve 17. Some other really great features they've added to Resolve 17 is the Resolve FX key effects. They basically have these four different ones here. They have added a 3D keyer, so you don't have to go either to the color page or fusion to do your keying. They also have Alpha Matte Shrink and Grow, the HSL keyer, and the Luma keyer. So I'll demonstrate that real quick here. You put in a 3D keyer, just drag it over like any other effects onto something you have green screen that you want to key. Make sure you're on the effects tab here. And then you can basically just draw a line through the part that you want to key out. So I'm going to draw a line here, kind of near the subject. And that keys it. Now it's not going to be perfect, you're going to have to refine it. One thing they add right here under the inspector is the spill. So you can see there's still a little green around her and kind of around the edges here. Click on dispel and that removes most of that. There's still some here you'd have to still tweak, but I get you a nice key right to start off with. And you kind of scrub through here and see the key. And if you don't want to see the line anymore, you can just toggle off the FX here. And if you don't didn't see it, you want to make sure you have the open FX overlay enabled. And you'll be able to see the line you drew for your key here. But that was another nice addition to Resolve 17 is the addition of these Resolve FX keys. Again, where you can do it right from the Edit tab and not have to go either into the Fusion or Color tab, which you still can if you want to. That is a nice addition to Resolve 17. Next thing I'm going to show you is a change they made to the Media Pool, which is they added a different view. So normally you'd have the thumbnail view here, which would give you a preview of the video, but wouldn't give you too much information about it. Or you could click on the list view, which would give you more information, but then you wouldn't be able to see what the video clip looked like. So they added the metadata view here. Click on that and you get both a preview of the video and also some information. And you can also sort it by different factors here. So you can go by bin, time code, camera, date time, clip color, date modified, so forth. And then you can scroll through your different clips. So that was a nice addition to the views in your media pool. So you could get a little more, have a little more custom view. So that was a nice change in the newest version of Resolve. A feature they've added in the new Resolve 17 helps to kind of merge together the ability of the edit tab and the fusion tab. And that is to allow you to add fusion overlays from your fusion effects. So basically here I'm going to add a fusion effect, which is digital glitch. It's from the effects panel here. I'll add that to my clip. And then you can see the effect here. And you can come over here to the inspector and you can change the settings here like you always could. But now you can also, right on the viewer itself, change the, say, the position here, the glitch position. You can see over there on the right, you can see it's changing. And you can also change the width here and the height. So this can be helpful to do it right from the viewer instead of having to go over and use sliders or uh, type in the numbers. And this could be added to uh, any fusion effects that you create yourself and add to the effects panel here. And here you see that I come across a bug. Now this is normal that it's, if you try to use something that's only involved in the studio version that you get this error. But if I click not yet, I get this glitch here. So that's something they're going to have to work out in the new betas in the final version. But this is a very nice addition. Kind of melds together the Fusion tab and the Edit tab to allow you to have a Fusion overlay, right? So you can modify your Fusion effects and change them right from the viewer. So that was another nice new addition to the new beta version of Resolve 17. Another new feature they've added, which is available from the Edit tab, is the ability to disable a timeline. So right here I have two different timelines. You can see both in the media pool and I can use a drop down here and switch between them. That's two, switch back to one. 
but if you have a large number of timelines, you might want to disable some so you won't, you won't accidentally switch to them and they won't mess up your workflow. So you come over here, I'm going to come over to the timeline two here, right click on it. The new thing they add here is the ability to disable it. So if you click disable timeline, it's now disabled. So I come up here, it's not in my list. So if I had 50 timelines and I only want to be working on a few of them, I can disable any ones I'm not working on and they'll be removed from this list. But if I want to use it again, just right click on it, click enable timeline. And now if I come up to the drop down, you see I can switch between the two different timelines. So as a nice new addition to the software, and it should come in handy again if you have a uh, project with a lot of timelines that will come in very handy. One of the biggest changes they made is in the Fusion tab, and that is the addition of audio. So you'll be able to use audio in your Fusion compositions. You see here you have a little microphone, and you can click on that to mute it. And also if you play, you can hear the audio. And if you want to view the waveforms, you can come up here to keyframes. You'll see the waveforms here and both left and right audio. You can scrub back and forth through here and play the audio. And that'll make it much easier to do anything like lyric videos or anything where you need to time your effects, uh, your motion graphics to audio. So that's a nice addition that, again, people have been requesting for quite a long time because it used to be, it is available in the Fusion standalone, but they don't offer that free more. You can only get Fusion Studio. So that is a nice addition to uh, Fusion in Resolve 17. One of the biggest changes they've made is to the Fusion tab, and that is the ability to customize and create new toolbars. Uh, that's a feature that's been missing uh, that was available in standalone Fusion, but you couldn't modify your toolbar here. But with this new version, Resolve 17, you can right click next to a toolbar and you can go to customize and click on create toolbar, name it, and you can add your own toolbar. Here I've already created one. So here I've deleted most of the other tools. So now if I want to now if I want to add one of these tools here, please, that's not already on the toolbar, I can just click and drag it here and you'll see the red line will appear where it's gonna be dropped. So I could place it here after this divider. So if I hover over here, you see it's a delta here. So now if you want to actually use that and you're done, just right click, click locked. And now this toolbar is able to be used. So you can drag and drop anything from it. I'll do the delta here. So anything's available and you can create as many toolbars as you want, I guess to within reason, but you can have easily three, four, five different ones based on your workflow and you can remove or add different tools to fit your needs. So that's a really nice addition to the built-in Fusion tab in the new Resolve 17. Another big addition they've added to the Fusion tab is the subcategory of effects called Shape Effects or Tool Shapes. And here you can see them listed under the Effects toolbar here. Each one starts with an S and you have different ones, S Boolean, Duplicate, S Eclipse, and they work similar to the 3D tools or the uh, particle tools. So I have a little example here where I have an S star and an S rectangle. And those are two different shapes. And basically you need a merge so you can view them. So here I have a white rectangle and I kind of a fuchsia star. And then to also view them, you have to have them piped into a render, S render which is available here in the toolbar. So in the merge, I have them both connected. So if I switch over to the star here and go over to the inspector, I can change the number of points. See them change here. Change the depth, change it from solid, change the border width, which is if you change it from solid, you want to change your border. Change the offset width and height, of course angle. So you have all these different ones. You have an end gone, you have jitter, you have a grid, you have an ellipse. You have all these different shapes and things you can trans we could transform it, you could duplicate, you could do a Boolean, which would delete one shape from another. So this is something to kind of play around with. 
but that should make it easier to create nice looking motion graphics for your videos. So that's a nice new addition to the Fusion tab of Resolve 17. They've also made additions and changes to Resolve 17 where the tabs uh, work more in cooperation. Uh, there's more of a uh, common theme between them. So here I've added a couple markers on the edit page. And if I switch to Fusion and go to the keyframes panel here, you can see the two markers there. And also if I go to the color page, you'll be able to see the markers here. So that makes it so it's a little more uniform between the different tabs. Uh, it makes it a little easier to switch between them and have it uh, work for you in switching between the different panels. Now one of the changes they made on the cut page is the ability to add individual frames to your media pool. Now before you'd have to go to the media tab and come up here and you select show individual frames if you wanted to import individual frames or otherwise you do it as an image sequence. But by default now on the cut page, if you have a selection of individual frames sequentially numbered, it'll still allow you to add it directly, drag and drop, and it'll add them individually. Now again, by default on the media page, it'll add them as an image sequence. And also if you do this from the edit page and drag them to the media pool, it'll do it as an image sequence. But from the cut page, it'll do it as individual frames. So if you just want to add one frame, you come down here and just add one frame to your timeline. Or you can add them as an image sequence again if you want to do it from the media tab or the edit tab. But that's a nice feature if you want to, if you're working with, again, sequentially numbered uh, individual frames and you want to treat them as individual frames, as individual images, this is a nice way so you don't have to go through and remember that you have to go to media and go to the three dots menu and click show individual frames. You can just go right to the cut menu, to the cut tab here, and just automatically do it. So that's a nice addition, nice change in Resolve 17. Now a change they made to the cut tab is the ability to have uh, safe areas displayed. So you can do a drop down here. You have ones for social media for different aspect ratios or one to one, say four to five, and they give you the different ones. You can enable and disable them. Right now it's the 1.33 and four to five. So you can disable them. And you have ones for action and title and center. So that's helpful. So that's a nice addition for Resolve 17's cut tab. They've made quite a few changes to the color tab. As you can see here, they've changed the uh, look of the wheels here. And also they have, instead of having two different tabs, you have all your different like color boost and your temperature and tint and contrast all displayed at one time. They just moved it to the one row up top and one at the bottom so you wouldn't have to switch between the two. And they've also added wheels for the HDR. And you could have four shown here, right here, but you could also click on here to get different set of the wheels. So you can work with them. And go back to the regular color wheels here. You have log wheels, just like you always could. And you also have a new tab up here called Color Warper, which has various different settings and tools here you could use. And just kind of show you really quick here is that you could take these different points and manipulate them and it'll change color values here. Not too up on this yet, but that's just kind of play around with that. And also within the curves, you've added a new sat versus loom. So you could change the two of those together here and play with that. So that's a couple changes that they've made to the uh, interface and to the tools of the color tab in Resolve 17. Now in the Fairlight tab of Resolve 17, they've made quite a few uh, big changes. I won't be going over too many of them uh, in this video, but just kind of give you a hint that they've uh, thoroughly reworked the 
uh, ability to use buses, so it's a lot more customizable, and you have a lot more different choices for what what you do with your buses and chaining them and linking them together. Uh, it's a lot more flexible than with previous versions of Fairlight. Uh, the audio engine that's underneath, that's uh, actually uh, working within Resolve, has been tweaked, so it's much quicker and much more powerful than uh, previous. So there's just a lot of different improvements that they made to the Fairlight tab. I'll be going over several of those changes in subsequent videos, but just let you know that there's uh, quite a big improvement in Fairlight and it's a lot more powerful in Resolve 17. One feature they added to the Fairlight tab of Resolve 17 is a transient detector. So you come up here and you enable and you click on this icon here and that enables it for the track and then as soon as you click over here on transient detection you see all the transients will be detected all the different places where you'll see a ch big change in the volume of the audio so you see all the different transients there and you can use that to help with your editing Get zoom in here a bit and see the different points here and if you want to disable it just click on that again and then you could also disable it from the track up here and then that disappears there. That's one new feature in Resolve 17's Fairlight tab is the transient detector. So that was a overview of some of the new features in the newest version of Resolve, Resolve 17. Uh, that's the beta one. They'll be releasing several new betas probably over the next couple months before they get a final version out. Now that doesn't cover, this video didn't cover all the new changes, so I'll be making a follow-up video, a part two, which go over some more of the features. I won't probably won't be quite as long as this one, probably be 10, 12 minutes long. And then I'll also be making videos about the individual features a little more in depth. So look for those over the next week or two. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching.